Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Best and Slot here with episode 9 of the Creation Kit Tutorial Series. Today we're going to be looking at nav meshing, which allows NPCs and enemies, AI of all forms basically, to walk through dungeons and to find paths around your dungeon, essentially. Um, a lot of you have had problems in the past where followers haven't followed you into dungeons that we've created, and that is because you don't have nav meshing. Without that, they don't know where to walk, they don't know where they can walk, and they simply won't enter the building. So hopefully today we're going to sort that out, so anyone who, out there who's got a dungeon that they want followers in, and with the next couple of tutorials, enemies as well, you'll be able to do that after today. So let's get started. As always, a file data, you want skyrim.esm loaded and you want Naxxus Tomb ESP or whatever it is your dungeon's called. And make sure you tick set as active file or double tick it, double click it even. Make sure it's set as your active file and that way we'll be safe from saving errors in the future. Now we need to bring up our nav mesh menu. So to do that, control E. Hold control, press E and you'll get this menu like this here. Um, don't need that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our render window. We're going to click in the void, which is this grey area around the outside of your dungeon. You want to click nav mesh at the top, go to generation, and go to recast based generation. There are a few up there. You want to use recast, it's the best, especially at this level. Don't worry about all the others for now, just focus on recast base. Recast based. And then go ahead and fill in all the information like I've done on here. Most of it should be the same. Your uh, agent radius, that one there, may be different. Just set that down to 8. Mine was a lot higher initially. Set that to 8 and everything should be okay. And go ahead and click OK. Now this will take a few seconds or up to a minute if your computer is particularly slow. It depends on the speed of your computer as well as the size of your dungeon and the presence of clutter. It also may tab you out and stuff like that. Don't worry about it, just give it a few seconds and eventually you'll end up with a beautifully nav meshed dungeon. If you do get a bit more advanced with what we're about to show you, the whole nav mesh idea, um, you can actually create this by hand. A lot of the more advanced tutorial uh, dungeon creators do do that. But for now it's a lot easier if we use an auto generated and then clean it up ourselves in post processing. Which is what we're going to do. So as you can see, our dungeon beautifully covered in nav mesh, nice and red. And all these red areas are areas that our NPC can walk in. So straight away we can see some problems. We don't want our NPC walking up these ruins on the right. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of them. And that's dead easy. All we do is hold the left mouse button, drag a box out, select the rough area we don't want anymore, hit delete. And as you can see, dead easy, that ruin area is now pretty much clear and okay so that's a basic principle of deleting nav mesh if you're just tidying it up like this table over here we don't want that anymore we drag let go hit delete nav mesh is gone and now our npc is not going to prepare to mount a table probably a good thing i should mention while you're doing this on your little nav mesh toolbar here you want to make sure the first two buttons the triangle selection and the vertice selection you want both of those ticked, you want the third one unticked for now. We will deal with that one a little bit later. So that's uh yeah. Moving on. As you can see, let's take uh I'm looking for a good example. Do 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 okay, this will do. So we've got some sort of rubble here in the corner, and we've got nav mesh sort of cutting over it and we don't really want that there but we don't want to go ahead and delete all these triangles because they're huge and it means we're going to have to re-nav mesh like half the room instead all we do is hold the left mouse button and drag the triangles out of the way dead simple and now the ruin the rubble is completely free our npc is not going to try and climb it unless they're very strange However, this does leave you with problems. Deleting and moving nav mesh around will leave you with sections like this, which theoretically there's no reason why this sort of expanse of ground here should not have nav meshing in it. There's no reason your NPC shouldn't be able to roam around this little bit here. So we're going to go ahead and create some nav mesh for this section. To do that, you want to hold control, left click on the vertice there, then we're going to hold control again, right click down here, and right click again where we want our triangle to finish and as you can see that will create a new nav mesh triangle for you and allow our NPC to go down into this area here 
you may also encounter problems like this, where basically upon deletion and movement you end up with a big gaping gap between an area that usually would have a triangle but now it doesn't seem to, so we need to be able to fill this back in. To do that, again, hold control, left click on the three vertices which are the squares at the end. If the squares are green, they're connected to a triangle and you've selected them. If they're red, they are connected to a triangle but you've not selected them. If they're yellow, you've not selected them and they're not connected to a triangle. If you end up with lots of yellow vertices at the end of the tutorial, at the end of your nav meshing, go ahead and delete them, you don't need them anymore. So we've got these three vertices selected in a triangle, we hit A, and there we go, beautifully nav meshed once more. That right there is actually pretty much the basic principles of nav meshing, moving around, adding new ones, and uh, just neatening the whole place up until you've got what looks like a fairly smooth passage through the room. Um, the size of the triangles doesn't particularly matter, you can have tiny triangles if you want, but generally speaking, try not to have loads and loads of little ones, you're better having these big, equal, actual, fairly huge triangles, it um, makes the whole process a lot smoother and easier to manage in the future. Just go ahead and move that out of the way there. So I'll just show you this again, let's say we want our NPC to be able to walk here, what we'd do is we'd take that, so we'd left Hold control, left click on that vertice, hold control and right click there, hold control and right click there. And that will give us another nav mesh triangle that wasn't particularly neatly done, but you get the basics. That is the basics of nav meshing. There are, however, a few more things that we should do in order to make this perfect, in order to make this quicker and to make it work how we want it to work. So You'll have noticed if you've got any staircases in your dungeon that nav meshing simply does not work. As you can see there's a big gap there and that is instantly, even if the auto generation worked perfectly everywhere else, it will falter at the staircase. So we're going to go ahead and try and fix this as well. First things first, you want to go and delete anything that's kind of basically the nav mesh that doesn't quite fit. What we want is at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs we want straight lines. As you can see here we've got one edge goes along there and that one can now link easily up to that top sort of section but if we go up here we've got one two three four it's a bit messy doesn't look fantastic so we're going to delete some of the others and start moving things about and that looks better to me so that's pretty much a straight line and that's pretty much a straight line and now we can join those two up quite easily, but first things first, we have to merge these. If you have more than three vertices at the top or the bottom of your stairs, consider merging them. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it neater. To merge these, we're going to hold control again, click on each vertice one by one, and then hit Q. And Q is like a merge key. And as you can see, it's now sort of, okay, it's taken away a triangle, but that's all sort of one easy triangle and it's very easy from that point to hold control left click both of those hold control and right click there and now we've got a nice straight edge which we can easily link with the straight edge down at the bottom now to link these two edges together you want to go back to your nav mesh toolbar select the third button along which is the select edges make sure that's pressed in then hold control double click an edge double click the lower edge and as you can see, instantly joins them together with two nice big triangles. Once you're a bit more proficient at this, the whole process becomes very quick and easy and you'll be building that mesh like you've been doing it since the day you were born, which would be slightly odd. But uh, yeah, you, I promise you, you will eventually get a lot more proficient with this and no, I'm not going to lie, nav meshing takes a long time. As you can see, you know, that's, this isn't a particularly huge dungeon, but that is a lot of nav meshing work to do. Though it takes a bit of time, eventually you'll be done and the payoff is worth it in that you'll have an actual working dungeon. You simply, you cannot have followers and you cannot have enemies in your dungeon if you do not nav mesh. So, if you do want to build a dungeon or anything like that guys, I'm afraid you do have to stick with it and get through this. But, there's a few things we can do to, um, well there's one thing we're going to do now that kind of... It's a good way to check whether nav meshing is actually working. It's all well and good to eyeball it and say, okay, yeah, there's no gaps there. Our NPC could probably walk through. But it's good that there's actually a way to check. We can actually find out 100% sure whether an NPC will follow our nav mesh. 
to do that you want to get your nav mesh toolbar up once again and we're going to select the seventh button along it looks like three little dots flying towards the sky you want to go ahead and click that and this will bring up the set pathing test attributes box from there you want to ignore test radius and avoid no dots ignore, ignore pretty much everything on there except choose actor go ahead and click that and this will bring up this list and now this is basically we're going to choose an actor and the size of the actor well the actor is going to attempt to move through our dungeon now obviously if you're trying to move a dragon through your dungeon you're going to require a far bigger nav mesh space and a far bigger dungeon area so it's quite important that if you're building a standard dungeon don't test it with a dragon just test it with normal sized NPC I like to use Argonian female preset 01 simply because it's one of the first basic NPCs you come across and you know that if this female fits through these nav mesh portals the vast majority of NPCs will go ahead and select her click OK and now what we do is we go back into our render window keep set pathing test attributes up go back into your render window and now you basically with each right click you set a path so if we right click here just right click there and then right click over here as you can see it's formed a yellow path and a yellow path means basically the NPC cannot get from our first click point to our second click point so something between here and there is blocking the process of our NPC now if we zoom in down here as you can see there's a gap there so we'd have to go and fix that up maybe we just that's not going to let us do it at the moment because we're pathing but the point is this is a very good way to check if there's faults in your dungeon design if we do it again all we do is right click down there right click there and as you can see the NPC can walk across the room without a problem you can right click anywhere just two right clicks as you see there's obviously a problem there because our NPC got to this point and stopped that's our start point that's our finish point and the NPC could not make it across again obviously this area is very broken and we'd have to go through and nav mesh that <clears throat> so if we right click here and then there the NPC is not going to make it across eventually assuming you've nav meshed your dungeon correctly and theoretically you should be able to right click at the start of your dungeon down here navigate to the end of your dungeon right click and if you've done it perfectly well if your dungeon works entirely and your NPC can ably navigate their way through the entire thing you should have a green line that extends throughout the entire dungeon with no gaps no yellow a pure green line if you've done that well done you have successfully nav meshed your dungeon hurrah just one more thing I want to show you which um, a lot of you won't really need to use but uh, for AI and certain things it's semi useful we're gonna go ahead and close that basically NPCs when they're in combat use cover cover they like to hide behind tall objects or you know things like that and um, range of characters in particular will use cover to their advantage I mean it's not a dedicated proper AI cover sort of scenario but they will use it and we're gonna go ahead and set some cover up for people and this is dead easy to do we want to go ahead and click nav mesh and then click find cover ev edges give that a few seconds to uh, load up you're not going to see any changes quite yet you want to go ahead and hit nav mesh again and then nav bleh, click draw cover just below nav mesh draw mode draw cover and now all these sort of cover things pop up and these are basically telling the NPCs in the game the height of certain items so if we look at this little doorway I've got here an NPC now knows how tall that section is and whether they will be able to fire at you from that side of the doorway whereas before before we did find cover they would not be capable of doing this now obviously that's not particularly good looking and you don't want to work on your dungeon while it looks like this so just click nav mesh and draw cover again and it'll go away that's about it. Um, our nav mesh should be finalised. You'd basically go around the dungeon deleting and adding new ones as necessary. Once you've finished, open your nav mesh little bar here, click the tick button, and this will take a few seconds. Once that's done, you can close your nav mesh, and your nav mesh is now finalised. You take that into the game, and theoretically, with a bit of luck and a bit of patience, admittedly, your NPCs should find their way through the dungeon without too much problem. 
I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, stick around for a couple more creation kit tutorials this weekend. We're going to be handling lighting finally, which um, proves to be quite exciting and will make our dungeons look far more interesting than they do at the moment. And then we're also going to handle AI. We're going to handle enemy encounters, how to set up enemies, how to make them path, how to make them the right level and all this kind of cool stuff. Going to be very cool. Stick around for that. Hope this helped. Uh, leave likes, comments and if you're really, really nice, a subscribe would be lovely. And other than that, I think we're good. Hopefully that helped. I've said that three times now. If you've got any questions, leave them. Even if I can't answer them personally, there's plenty of very uh, knowledgeable, uh, knowledge, knowledgeable, unlike myself, people out there who will be able to tell you what to do and how to fix whatever problems you are having. Okay, that's it. We are done. That is how you navigate your dungeon. Thank you for joining me as always. I've been Best and Start. I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.